Hey, we're so glad that you're in House Church tonight, and what an incredible way uh, to build community and everything I'm going to talk about today out of Genesis 12 has to do with what you guys are smart enough to be doing right now. We've been talking about identity and how it's so easy to get our identity from a lot of other things, especially our culture, you know, the things that we see that we want. If we just had that, if we just had this, uh, then we would be happy. Uh, a lot of people find their significance and identity in being rebellious. You know, if I want to do drugs, if I want to sleep around, if I want to do whatever, that's my life. I can do what I want to do. And today we're going to find that, uh, again, your identity, if you really want an identity that lasts, it's got to be a gospel identity where you see yourself as, as God sees you. And one of the things that you need to understand is that not everybody, uh, we've all been created by God, but not everybody is a child of God. And so maybe tonight that's something you need to make sure of that uh, God sees you, but he sees you as separated from him. And the one thing you need to do is have a relationship with him where you nail that down. I've done this so many times with people where they're like, hey, how do I know for sure? And I'm like, well, this is how you know for sure. And and we've sat down together and we've prayed together and we've connected uh, to the covenant. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight is the covenant. In, in Genesis chapter 1, uh, or Genesis chapter 3, verse 21, uh, there's an amazing verse there that a lot of people just skip over. And it's after Adam and Eve sinned. They ate the fruit and they were hiding and, and they said that they were ashamed and they were naked and that whole thing. Go back and read that if you haven't read it in our reading plan. And the Bible says that, that, that God was so gracious that he took some skins and he covered them so they wouldn't be ashamed anymore. And really it's the first signal that, that sin is a big deal. Uh, sin requires a payment. And, and the covenant is that God made a payment for your sins through Jesus. And so the covenant kind of goes all the way through the Bible. And, and when you have a covenant relationship with God, nothing can break that because you've exchanged your place for where, you know, Jesus it takes your place and you're no longer a sinner, you're righteous. He's no longer righteous, he takes your sin. And it's the same way, and Timmy talked about this last week in the covenant of marriage where where the covenant is like an animal, it means to cut, covenant means to cut. Where an animal is cut and you stand between the animal and say, hey, you know, by some symbolism, may this be done to me and even more if I break this promise. And so covenant is a big deal. And covenant is also what binds us together as the family of God. So covenant has something to do with your spiritual life and being part of God's family. Covenant has everything to do with your marriage and why you work through things. And then covenant has everything to do with the fact that you're a part of a family, a spiritual family, because your faith, even though um, it may be personal, it's not private. Uh, you were made for community. And, and here's how we follow the covenant all the way back to Genesis chapter 12. I'm going to read this just so you'll have it. Uh, the Lord said to Abram, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you, and I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you, and I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing, and I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you, and all the peoples of the earth will be blessed through you. God said, I'm making a family. My family is going to be a blessing to the whole world, to all people. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him, and Abram was 75 years old. He was an old man. Uh, no offense. And when he went out from Haran, he took his wife, Sarai, our name would later be changed to Sarah, his nephew Lot, all their possessions they'd accumulated, and the people they had acquired in Haran, and they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. And Abraham traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Moriah at Shechem. At the time, the Canaanites were in that land, and the Lord appeared to Abram and said, to your offspring, I will give this land. So Abram built an altar there to the Lord who appeared to him. 
And from there he went on toward the hills east of Bethel, and he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. And there he built another altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. And Abram set out and continued toward the Negev. Now, now that's a lot of stuff. You go, how does it relate to me? It has everything to do with you because that's where the people of God and the family of God started through Abraham. When you go through Abraham to Isaac to Jacob, whose name became Israel, you're starting to get the picture uh, from Israel to the judges, a time of the judges to the kings to the time of that silent period, that interbiblical period of 400 years, and then Jesus is born. And when Jesus comes, he, he's like saying, hey, I, I want my family to be all people. And, and the church is formed. And when you begin to understand that, that God died for you, but he also has the bride of Christ that is his church. You see the symbolism and and all the things we're talking about, about covenant. You go all the way back to you, a marriage, Jesus is the bridegroom, and now you is the family of God. And there's some things that God calls us to do. It's never been about us just, you know, coming together and sitting and talking. It's about us doing life together. It's about us being willing to go with a purpose. And, and Jesus had a lot to say about that. Matter of fact, he showed us, he, he said basically, well, he did say this. He said, as the Father has sent me, I send you. And, and think about where he came from. He came from heaven. You think your neighborhood's good. You, you, you think your house is good. I mean, think about the fact that Jesus came so that you could know him. And he's given you and I the responsibility as the family of God to go and to share and to be witnesses. As a matter of fact, five times in five different books of the Bible, Jesus would say, hey, you go. You go and you share and you be uh, the hands and feet, my hands and feet. So, so one thing he says that we're to be people who are willing to go and not just on a mission trip or, or on a special event. As we go, matter of fact, in Matthew, he's saying to them, this is one of his last things he said to them, as you are going, make disciples as a lifestyle, you know, where you're going and, and you're going with a purpose. The second thing he, he talks about, and I think this is where I've missed it a lot, that we live with power, that, that when the Holy Spirit came, uh, it weaponized us. It gave us supernatural power, not to be weird, but to have faith and have hope and have love for people that are very difficult to love. And, and that power is something that you and I have today. Uh, there was a quote that I, I found, I think it was Louis Giglio that said this, that I thought was powerful for me to understand. Because a lot of times I'll have like a vision or a dream and I'll kind of run out and ask God to bless it. And, and I'm finding that the best way to have power is to, is to wait and be a part of God's dream. So he, here's what he said. God having a plan that includes you is better than you having a plan that includes him. And, and I think maybe that's a good word for somebody. You've got a plan. I'm going to get a husband. God bless me. And God's saying, you know, I've got a plan for you. I, I'm going to take care of you. But, but you, need to, you need to wait on me. You, you need to let me guide you because with me, you have all the power that you could ever possibly need. And, and, and we're to be givers. We're, we're to give with passion. And, and that's one thing that sets us apart is, as the people of God and the family of God. Hey, man, we're just naturally generous because everything we have is given us by God. I saw a, a tag. I'll give this real quick. It says, JC, I owe you. Jesus Christ, we owe you. Blessings as the people of God.